Ever wondered why runways have the big white numbers painted on them? It's not just random, they're actually super simple yet genius system that pilots around the world rely on every day. Let's break it down. Runway numbers are based on the heading you're facing when taking off or landing. They come from the compass heading and we round them up to the nearest 10 degrees. So when you're taking off from this runway, your heading is 263, it becomes 260 and then 26. Pretty simple, right? What if the runway can also be used in the other direction? All you have to do is subtract 180 from the heading. So runway 26 will become runway 08 because 260 minus 180 is 080. It just points in the opposite direction. You might have seen letters like L, C or R paired with the runway numbers. That's because a lot of the time airports have to run parallel runways and as they're pointing to the same direction they will have the same number. So in order to differentiate which one you're landing at they have to be labeled left, center or right. So if you have two runways they're gonna be labeled left and right. If you have three, left, center and right. What if you have four runways? So imagine you have an airport with four parallel runways and they all point to the same heading of 280. In this case you're gonna have to number the runways like this. 28 left, 28 center and 28 right. And the other one is gonna be called 29. Even though it also points to the heading of 280, it can't be named 28 because of the other three. So you're just gonna round to the next number which is 29. Runway numbering as we know today started to become a thing in the 1920s and 1930s as aviation was rapidly growing. Early airfields didn't have any numbering system. Pilots would just land whatever they could and runways would just be, you know, the runway. As both commercial and military aviation were expanding rapidly, international regulations made it essential to create a system that everybody followed. And by the mid 20th century, the compass based system was widely spread. Most major airports have more than one runway and the direction they point isn't just random. We choose runway headings based on a bunch of different things. Wind pattern, terrain, noise abatement, topography and already existing infrastructure. So if you live in a place where it's very windy and you're planning to open a new airport, great, build your airport against the wind. Noise abatement procedures. If you're building a new airport right next to a town or neighborhood, it might not be a good idea to send traffic straight to the neighborhood. So you have to respect that. Topography. If there is a mountain in front of your town, you don't build the runway taking off directly to the mountain, right? Those things have to come into consideration when choosing how to build an airport. And also existing infrastructure. If something has already the shape of the airport and it just makes more sense to build a runway like that, great. Here's where things get a little tricky. Runway numbers are based on magnetic headings. The insides of the planet are a blob of hot metal spinning around, creating a giant magnetic field, but it's not stuck in place, it's always moving around. And because of that, if the magnetic pole shifts enough, you're gonna have to renumber your runway. A good example of this is Tampa International Airport had to rename the runways. Let's say you have an airport with the runways 3618 and also 0927. The runways perfectly point to the north and south, east and west. Now let's say that the magnetic north starts going a little bit to the right in our point of view. Now our runway is no longer pointing to 360 or 180 or 270 and 090. Now everything is pointing 10 degrees less than it was before. So we're gonna have to renumber all the runways. What if the magnetic north decides to go back to where it was before? Well, then we're gonna have to repaint those runways one more time. The difference between the true north and magnetic north is called variation. And in places where variation are extreme, like northern parts of Canada or Greenland, some airports use true heading for the runway numbering, because otherwise they would have to repaint the runway every year. Now, since the magnetic north has shifted, this runway right here no longer points to the north. You see what, what's happening here? If you're holding a compass, north is no longer here. Now it's all the way here. This runway right now changed by this much. This runway, which is sitting much further away, only changed by this much. 
This is why runways closer to the north suffer more with this problem. You can also find the variation in your region using navigational charts like this one. Variation can also be either to the east or to the west, depending on where the true north is and where the magnetic north is from your position. So in here around Vancouver, variation is around 15 to 16 degrees east. It means that the magnetic north is to the east of where the true north is. Pitt Meadows is a great example of this. All the roads in the Vancouver region point north, south, east, west. And when you're flying, you see that runway 36 is actually a little bit tilted because it's pointing to the magnetic north, not the true north. You're never gonna see a runway numbered 00 because that would be runway 36. In aviation, we refer to north as 360 and not 000. So just to clarify, why we don't start from zero. And we also refer to the runways digit by digit. We don't say runway 26, we say runway 26. We don't say runway 18, we say runway 18, just to keep everything clear and well pronounced. In the US, they drop the first zero on the runway number, so 07 is just gonna be runway seven. In Canada and in Europe, they say runway 07 or in here, here to land runway 08 left. It's not only painted on the ground 08, but we also say 08. Being a good pilot means staying up to date. Your charts always have to be updated, also your database. If you're flying into a region you're not familiar with, with old maps, the variation is gonna be off and maybe even runway numbers are gonna be off. So just make sure you have updated charts and airport information so you don't make any mistakes. So the rule of thumb is, Get your heading, go to the nearest zero, drop that zero, and that's the runway number. So if you're coming to land in an airport and the heading is more than five degrees off, it's because you're not using the correct runway. So now the next time you're at the airport and you see those giant numbers, you know what they mean. But remember, maybe they will change thanks to the Earth's magnetic field being always on the move. And that video I did with all the runway numbers pointing to its heading going in a full circle, that was heavily edited because a lot of the runways don't point exactly to the true north because of variation. Now you know. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to become a pilot in Canada but you're not sure how to get it started, just send me a message on Instagram. It's Fly with Pedro. The link is down in the description. I'll be happy to help. And I'll see you next week.